Okay, so, uh, okay, so make me a, and let's just, for simplicity's sake, let's forget our 480 terabytes. We're, we're, let's talk about replication. Cool. So, so and it's, this is synchronous replication. This is things that are always replicated, so the instant a server dies, you're going to be able to survive. There's so it, an it's exit. taking us into the world of high availability. You got it. Okay. Um, well, if I'm doing that, I'm going to lose capacity, right? You got it. Yeah. That, you, that's inherent. You can't get away from that. If you want true high availability, you need two copies of something. Okay. Because it needs to be sitting there lying in wait to be failed over to. Okay. If it's going to be instantaneous. Okay. So right away, if we're going to have a, uh, a highly available cluster, bare minimum is we've got to make two copies of the data. We're going to have half of our effective storage. Right. Now, I can replicate at higher levels, right? I yeah, can, uh, you can. You can go to three. And I think you could do four with ClusterFS. I, as you can tell, I've never gone higher than but three. But nobody ever wants four replica? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's hugely expensive. That's hugely ultra, expensive. It would be ultra available. It would be ultra available. Oh, yes, but very, very yeah, expensive. Yeah, and the conventional reliability, conventional gear, you're just not going to lose that many servers. You, you so. got it. You yeah. got it. Okay, so let's go through an example here. So here's what I'm gonna do, Brad. I'm gonna set this up just to be simple, and I hope everybody listening here uh, doesn't mind our contrived uh, use cases, but they're just intended to be illustrative. So because we're gonna lose half our capacity, what I wanna do, Brad, is I wanna set you back here from our, our beautiful diagram. Okay? <laughs> beautiful, and, yes. Uh, and you guys, uh, you know, my beautiful handwriting and Brett's beautiful handwriting, I'm gonna erase this, okay? And I'm gonna set this up this way. Uh, we said 480, we said 500, which turned into 480. And we actually ended up with <laughs> Look at more. Look keep moving the target. And, yeah. and we rounded up. I'm going to go to 240. Oh, okay, Why cool. am I doing that? Because we'd have to draw six boxes or we'd have to draw cool. more. And so we, we can make a part of that. Yep. So we just use the same hardware. Yeah, let's say the boss came along and said, ah, I don't need as much storage, but I need high availability. You got and it. Create me a high availability, synchronous replicated cluster cluster from nodes A, B, C with 30 hard drives in each of those, A, yeah. B, C. So I got to set, I, and, and let's say I so set up my RAID arrays. Yeah, we're using the same RAID configuration as we did in the other one. 15, 15, 15. Although okay. we're replicating with cluster, it's still the same storage underneath as the other one. And, the and other that's one, always sorry, the there, right? One. Gluster is still based on good old RAID arrays and all the stuff that you know if you're a system and use Linux, right? Yeah, and that's what makes Gluster so simple. It's, it's another layer on something that most people are already familiar with. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so we got this. Now, how are you going to set this up to be a replicated cluster that'll survive uh, that disaster that happens? Gotcha. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to erase these 15s. Because we know what RAID array we built underneath. We built our 215s, and we have our LVM pool, and now we're ready to create our bricks. Yep. So in the other case, we made one big brick, one big brick, one big brick, and we just tied them all together. Yep. Okay, but now we're going to replicate. And you might be able to see right away, if I have one brick, one brick, one brick, he could replicate to him, but what's C doing? So at this point, to have an odd number of servers replicated in Gluster, we're going to have to have an even number of bricks on each server. Okay. Odd number of servers requires an even number of bricks such that everything can replicate to something else. You got it. Beautiful. Can you draw my bricks in in red in there? So we got raid volumes each cool. sub rectangle so is. I'm just going to get rid of this little black line okay. and put it back in in red just to. Ooh, okay. ooh that was a nice sinusoid there. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Can't take the engineer idea, right? No. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, cool. So the idea here is what I just illustrated is, and we'll call this B1. B2, B, B1, and B2, B1, B2. Brick 1, Brick 2, Brick 1, Brick 2, Brick 1. So that would be Brick 1 on Server A, Brick 2 on... Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So how does my replication work? Okay. So you need... A, we're going to build a replica 2, so we're making two copies of the data. Okay. Okay. So um, we like to build these things so you can expand them one server at a time. That's a very economical way okay. of our, we have big servers, so people don't want to always buy two okay. more big servers every time. So we're going to limit this to building a cluster cluster such that I can just add one more server and keep growing it that way okay. and keep it replicated. Okay. So what I'll do in this scenario is I'm just going to start with this one brick. This is where data would live. And when I create the volume, I'll tell it that its pair is B uh, brick two on B. So that means I'd say, Geez, I'm reaching pretty good here. I'm going to draw it over here. Um, 
A, brick one. Its replica pair is B, brick two. And then I'm going to follow this same idea again, and I'm going to take B's brick one, and I'm going to make its replica pair over on node C, brick two. And the same thing follows here. We're going to go B, brick one, and that's going to replicate over to C, brick two. Okay. You might be able to see where my pattern's going here. I'm going to take brick one on C and yep. just kind of pretend that it wraps around like that. It's going to go over there. So I'm going to go C brick one, and its replica pair is node A, brick two. So what this is, is each one of these replica pairs are an exact mirror of your data. Okay. So that, let's follow your example last time and say we lost node C. Yep. Node C went down, so that means I'm missing node C's brick one and I'm missing node C's brick two. Nice that it has in its exact pair over at B. And B is still up. C's brick two is, I already did that, C's brick one, its pair is AB2, still up. As far as your users are concerned, that data is still accessible. Beautiful. So you're out, well, no, sorry, me, I'm the sysadmin here. Yep. And I'm the guy with the gun pointed at the head. And uh, I, I don't hear that loud decibel noise out in the uh, out in the cubicle area, and the bosses are all happy. They don't know what's going on, and I'm just going, "Why is my hardware down?" And I oh, power supply failure, and I go, or, "Oh, somebody knocked the core power cord out." Mm. So in our, our scenario, our first example we did, he'd be at your door yelling at you, "What's going on?" Yeah. That same scenario happens with this. He didn't even notice. Yeah. And you already fixed the problem before anyone did. I'm now mission, uh, I'm now critical because I've lost my redundancy. You're right. So act now, but yeah. you don't have anyone knocking on your door. Yeah. If Beautiful. you don't act fast, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. Yeah, but conventional, we're talking, storing it as enterprise grade reliability, enterprise grade hard drives, unlikely for my, you, my raids to go down or whatever else. It. And remember, too, the raid is still underneath. Yeah. So what this Gluster layer is doing is not so much allowing data protection, it's more allowing data availability. Okay. So we're still, like, the raid's still keeping it safe. We still could rebuild from the other one if we wanted to, if we wanted a whole brand new server here. Like, say this thing literally burnt to a crisp. That's fine. Yeah. Put in another server, yeah. and Gluster will heal itself back over. If I had the same server and it just went down because somebody knocked the power cord out, probably get, got a, it's getting out of sync a little bit. When it comes back up and my raids are still alive and, and, and got most of the data is there with integrity, what all does it take to get it back? Okay, so and then there we would just glusters, cluster the heal daemon that runs in the background at all times of the cluster volume. The cluster would heal, sense, heal daemon. Would sense yeah. that there's newer files here than there are here. There's a third member watching, Oh, because I'm going to get to that in a second, and it just fixes whatever's broken here. Gotcha. So I just mentioned third member. You might have no noticed earlier I said, oh good, let's pick three servers, that'll help yep. when we get to here. So a problem that we inherently have with replicating things yep. instantaneously is called split brain. Okay. Split brain is when, for example, say we only had two available at all times. Yep. If one blipped and came back up and this now had a file that was altered three seconds ago and this one was two seconds ago, yep. the cluster volume doesn't know who's right. Yep. So it pauses yep. because that's safe. And then you, ha you as the administrator have to go in, choose which one's the right file, and then boom, split brain's f healed and you're good to go. Gotcha. So to avoid that altogether, yep. you have a third member watching at all times. Okay. okay. And that's beyond just the data sets. It's, it's, it's doing a watch to see what was written latest. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the idea there, and that holds true if we, once we go on and talk about Ceph, still do the same thing avoiding split brain. Whenever you're replicating anything, you run the risk of split brain and there's numerous ways to try to avoid that. And this is how we get around it with cluster. Okay. Three, 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 three. Okay, very good. So, we didn't talk about expandability no. on, on, uh, on our distributed, simple distributed cluster, but let's just make a comment on it now. I mean, just t take another so server easy. and, and just, you just add it in. Like, it's yeah. really trivial. It, it really is easy. So, like, you'd have to make your raid array and all that. But, again, that's easy. We've got our scripting. You can call our support team up. We'll help you do that. Or you can, or you can run the same and commands. And what is there for cluster command to add a brick in? It, it literally is one. It would be two yeah. commands because you'd have to peer yeah. your new member in. As in, like, let, let these guys know they have a new friend. And then you say, okay, here's your new brick. And then it has a new cubby hole to start filling up. 
So let's get digital into digital cubbyhole. Digital cubbyhole. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into one uh, next area. So along comes great. We've just set up a distributed cluster. We've gone through a server going down. Let's get that X off of there. Yeah, she's back. We Cluster's back. back. And uh, you're a hero and you told the boss after work what happened and how you saved them and whatever else and how you're now back into your, your redundancy. Bosses are happy. Just gave you a big raise. Woohoo! Love it. Okay, great. So now the boss comes by and says, uh, I'm sorry, but we've uh, run out of space. We just uh, acquired a new company and we uh, need more data storage. Uh, so, uh, so he says, can you buy another server and put another server on? So purchase order was let out, and all of a sudden I have server D. So we got our fourth server in there, and we still have our replication, as in CB1 is uh, still tied to AB2, but we want this in here. Yep. Okay, so how do we expand? The other one's very easy. You just say, here, you've got another brick. But we've got a little, a little more work to do here because we've got pairs. And who is this going to pair to? Every pair's taken. So what we do is we set this fourth server up the same we would set up all the other servers, build our raid, we make our two bricks on it, and we'll call it brick one, brick two. And, and I'm really seeing, Brad, right now, as you talk about this, why you want your bricks to be the same size, right? Yeah, bricks being the same size is, is well, actually, for a replicated volume, it's, yeah. it has to happen. Has as to happen, you can yeah. see, if they're going to have pairs, how can you replicate if one yeah, pair is so, smaller than so the other So equal size bricks. It's got to happen. Yeah. The nice part about uh, using ZFS or using LVM underneath, since we're making uh, virtual almost uh, volumes yeah. for the bricks, we can, we've got some leniency on size. Okay. See what I mean? Yep. So, yep. like even if for say, if for some reason you build the next one out of 10 terabytes, someone made a mistake and you get stuck with 10 terabytes, yep. you can just virtually make them, you can make it work. Yep, right, hopefully, L LVM, hopefully that'll never happen. L LVM will do whatever you want, yeah. right? Yeah, yep. you got it. Yep. So, um, anyway, so let's expand this guy. So, we don't have to touch any of those, we have to get that in here. So, um, So I'm, I'm good in this replication, I'm good in this replication, but this guy is pointing to here, Yeah, and that's no good. No, it okay. needs a new, it needs to go. So this is what needs to happen. We need to destroy a replica pair. So we're killing this guy. We're killing that guy. Right. So this has all the data, it was replicated to here. We told Gluster those two are not a replica pair anymore. So. Um, this brick's gone, that replica's broken, all the data's still here. What I need to do is make a new brick with this guy, tie it to this one. And what that will do then, is take all the data's on here and sync it to this new empty spot. And you've got a new pair. Straightforward, the downside being that you got some network traffic for a while. You got it. And that's some of, and that's some of the, which we didn't talk about, we just made two quick bricks. But you can imagine if you have to plan expansion on this, but your brick is 30, this isn't too bad, but say your brick represents 200 terabytes, that's 200 terabytes of data you're going to have to move. No. No. So expanding with ClusterFS, well, it can happen. Um, sometimes it's almost better just to build what you're going to be expanding to rather than almost just like starting too small. And that's what I was... Yeah, so it's not the end of the world to expand. It's still expandable. It's not the end of the world, but you, but you have to that definitely is, understand that, that you're going to have to move some data. There is a data transfer that has to happen. Figure out your network size and uh, your network speed mm -hmm. and figure out the amount of data you have to move and you can figure out how long that's going to take to sync up. Right? You got it. Beautiful. Good. So what I just did here, I'm not done yet either. So what I just did is I took the data that was on here and I replicated it here. Okay. Okay, so as far as this is concerned, I have the same capacity, same amount of replica pairs as I had before but now I have an empty brick and an old brick. So I can just kill this brick, and that's what we do. We usually, we just get rid of it. Which means the data, you just ignore the data. But what, but what we would do is we make sure this finishes first, because it's always nice to have a little bit of a backup. As right everyone on. knows in yep. the IT world, yep. if you get a second copy of your data, uh, just you feel a little safer. Because shit happens. Because shit happens, yep. exactly. Yep. Are we even supposed to swear on these? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, anyway, so we can, we'd mark that, whatever, we'd make a new data set. And then we would just add a new brick in, just like we did the first time, it's, except this empty, is a new so the, empty brick. Yeah, this is empty, so just pairing it up, there's no data transfer time or anything like that. You got it like that. This, and this is your new capacity, yeah. this brick. So step number one is to move your replica from there over to there, keeping that 
mm -hmm. as backup when that's done and you're safe. And actually the moment you finish that, you actually have three copies of your data, mm -hmm. right? So you're extra safe. And then at that point, then we only pair that guy up, we pair up that, you know, mark that as empty, pair the two up. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, like I was saying with distributed, pretty easy, nothing too scary there. This, uh, this can be a tedious process. Well, it can be a tedious process. And any time that you have to move a lot of data, people want to be very sure that they're going to do the right thing. Because yep. like you said, shit happens. So uh, this is, we've got some scripting tools that we do this, but we also, we've got something scripted. But we also like to do this part manually because as you would know, moving data, deleting data, whatever, automatically, sometimes you just want to be sure of yourself. Absolutely. So, so that's what we do. We go in and we break that manually, move it. So this is uh, the 45 Drive Support team really wants to help you expand, especially with the replicated, just to ensure that everything goes smoothly. Okay, and observing one other thing, if you do your expansion, you have to do, you have one brick's worth of data to move, no matter how many you add, right? So if you're going to add, if you're going to do an addition, you might as well do them. Um, you know, it's a very doable thing to add, but the more you do it once, then you know, if you add it them one at a time and then you know, next month buy another yeah. one. No, I do them in chunks because you save your... That's a great point. Don't, don't, uh, yeah, expand bigger less often than small more often. That's a very convoluted way of and, saying and, that. And but. it's the, yeah, and, and I mean, if you have the time, it's not special or any daunting or ultra high risk. It's just work. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just, just work, and you yeah. got to transfer some data, so your network's going to tie up a little bit. Yeah, you, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool, good. That's so, it. so, so that's replicated clusters.